how do you do? Um, we are continuing our journey through all of the devices in Bitwig today with Blur. Uh, I've been kind of throwing a lot of these videos out lately because I'm, uh, you know, trying to build up my confidence in doing them and stuff and I want to get them all done. So we're going to do a bit of an easier one today, Blur. It only has a couple of controls. We've been through some of the really complicated ones like the vocoder and stuff. So we're going to take it easy for a bit and then maybe launch into some more complicated ones again next week. Um, yeah, so let's launch into it. Uh, a bit of a behind the scenes here. Um, I actually sit on my bed for these because I've just moved house and I don't have a computer chair yet. So there you go. Uh, I, don't, I hope that hasn't ruined any of the magic of the videos. Anyway, uh, Blur. Uh, blur is... What is Blur? Okay, let's start with that. Blur is um, a group of all pass filters put together, which sounds fairly complicated, but actually it's basically just a delay. So I've got like a, a house loop thing here. Just a standard drum thing. And if I turn the Blur on, it's not at the default setting now. At the default setting, it kind of just widens things. But if you pull these out, you can hear quite clearly what it is. It's a delay. So what are these anyway? This is your left side, the two white ones, and these are your right side, the two red ones. What you've got here is a control for the time of the delay. So over here, it's shorter. And over here, it's longer. And then you've got a control for the uh, feedback. Which, for all intents and purposes, equates to the volume. Up the top, it's going to be kind of ringier and stuff like that. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all there is to Blur. It's got a, it's got a mix knob. And... Um, that's basically it. It's not a very complicated thing, but you can do uh, quite a bit with it, actually. So uh, the the first thing I think it's intended use is is really just to widen things up. So I'll show you here a couple of examples of how you might use it. So I've got this same house beat here below here. So it's the same thing. But on this clap here, let's say we wanted to just widen this clap up. Let's bring in that blur. So you can hear... When you're mixing it like way in, it's it's quite ringy and stuff like that. But if you bring it down, it just gives a nice sort of subtle wideness. So let's just listen to the clap by itself. And you can mess around with these. Generally, the closer they are together, the less kind of noticeable it's going to be as a delay. So you can hear now if I turn that off. It's kind of adding an ambience in the background. This will be a good time to mention as well that if you're not listening on some sort of a stereo capable system like headphones or studio monitors or something like this, some of these effects are going to be fairly subtle. So uh, we're just going to have a look at another use for it here. So that's just kind of, you know, maybe widen up percussion or something like that. Um, a big place this is also used, or is also quite useful to be used, is in um, sound design. So let's say you've got a bass here that's kind of mono sounding. So we've got some cool movement and stuff going on in that, like, uh, bass thing. Um, what we can do is we want to, you know, we want a bit more excitement in the ears, you know. There's, there's not a whole lot of stereo information going on. So if we bring in the blur, we can make it more stereo -er. So let's have a listen to that. So you can hear that's a massive difference. It's just adding a, a massive amount of dimension to the bass. And let's take it off again. So it's just adding, it, it basically what it's doing is it's just delaying the left and right ear a bit so that you can, you're kind of hearing things independently in each ear and it just makes it more interesting. Uh, the next example I've got here is an example of using it on a vocal. So I've got a, uh, just a live vocal here and I'm going to add it on just as a kind of widener. So generally if you're recording a vocal, you might do a double track where you record two of the same vocal and you pan them left and right and it's you know the slight differences kind of make it more interesting stereoly if you've just got like a mono vocal like what we've got here Never. 
you might want to spice it up a bit by adding the blur in. So let's add, let's play this through and let's bring in this blur effect to kind of widen out the vocal. So you can hear it's kind of subtle, but it's given almost a double tracking effect to the vocal. When we take it off, so you can hear it kind of loses a lot of dimension. And back in again. And we take it off. And let's just solo the vocal. And let's add it in again. So you can hear it's just a subtle way of 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 stereoizing anything you might want to stereoize. Um, you can use it on guitar and stuff like that as well. The thing is, is when you're using it as a stereo a stereoizer, um, you want to make sure that you're not going overboard with the the mix here. So first of all, if you've got like something percussive, like a guitar or something like that. Um, uh, and there's like a percussive element to it. If you've got like little delays in there, you might hear them. So you want to keep the mix fairly low. It's a fairly subtle effect. It's the same with vocals. With things that are more drawn out, you can have a more sort of, a, you can have a bigger mix uh, in with it really because drawn out things aren't full of transients where you're going to hear different delays. But with things where it's kind of transient, you need to be careful with the mix and maybe even pull the mix down on the transients and let it back up on the sustained notes. But yeah, that's uh, just a couple of examples of how you can use blur as a mixing tool. Now let's look at it as more of a creative effect. So uh, I've got a drum loop here. If I go back to the start where the drum loop is, I have a drum loop. So we've got this. Very, very, very cool. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, turn on this blur chain. And what I've got is I've got a bunch of blurs here that are set up slightly differently. So I've got this macro attached and the macro is pulling the delays out. OK, so what this is going to do is create in small movements kind of a flanger and uh, in larger movements, you're going to hear it be kind of a washed out sort of dispersed delay kind of a sound. So let's just move the it a small amount first. So you can hear it kind of sounds like a, a flangey kind of a thing um, or kind of comb filtering. And the reason for that is that's basically how you create those effects is you put a delay against uh, a signal and you slightly offset them. And that's what causes the phase cancellation that causes those effects. So if we pull it way up, it's going to eventually disperse into like a cloud of different delays. So let's have a listen to that. So I'm going to pull the macro all the way up this time. So there, one thing you may not want is you may want to have an effect like that, but you, know, you might not want it to be stereo. So um, I've got a mono button here as well. And at the end, what this is doing is it's bringing a tool. Uh, it's got a tool here and it's bringing the width all the way down. So we're not hearing any stereo. It's all just mono. So we're, then we're just getting this kind of crazy grainy sort of effect. The thing um, that I just want to mention while I'm talking about this mono button is it is extremely important if you're using this uh, sort of, uh, I guess, as a mixing tool to make sure that you check uh, things in mono. So if you're using it on a bass and you've got it like, you know, 100% mix, let's go, let's put six of these on there. First of all, you probably don't want to do that. But second of all, um, if you are, if you must... Um, you put a tool on there, bring the width down, and make sure that it isn't completely disappearing in the mix or that it sounds somewhat similar. Because when you're messing with, you're basically controlling what's going in each ear hole individually. And when you've got that much control over the stereo, stereo spectrum, it's easy to go a bit too far and make it so that everything is just phase canceling each other. So you got to be subtle with it. Um, this in general, uh, other than these next few examples that I'm going to show you, which are kind of mental but this generally is a subtle kind of effect 
this isn't something like that you're putting on, do you know, let's put six of these on the master, 100% mix, let's get a limiter on there, let's get this out to the kids. It's more of a kind of a, let's mix this at about 20% kind of a thing. Um, but it's cool all the same. So the last thing I'm going to show you is just using it as a, um, a kind of a metallic sort of a delay reverb type of thing. So, so I've just got a snare going through here and I've got uh, a few of these blurs set up. So the reason that I'm setting up multiple blurs is because they are kind of acting... One feeds into another, so you've got like a, a really short delay that feeds into a really other short delay and another short delay and another shorter delay and you get a kind of a metallic tail that's caused when you do something like that. So if I uh, pull up the mix here, you can hear as it comes up, you're getting kind of a metallic tail added onto the snare. So it's cool to add like a ringy sort of sound if you wanted to add like a ringy sound to some synth you're doing or some snare or something like that. It's cool for that. But what's more interesting and what I'm sure you're thinking is, hang on, if I, like if I layer a whole load of those on top of each other, couldn't I make like some sort of a cool stereo reverb where the tail like comes in and out of one ear and into the other? And you absolutely could. And we're going to show you that now because here it is. So this one is a bit more mad. So there's... Uh, I don't know, about a lot of blurs here. I don't know, 12. Under 100, over 12. Somewhere in that region. And they've all got different amounts that are set. So what's happening here is one blur is going into another blur, going into another blur, going into another blur, and they're creating a tail because they're all delaying off each other. And that's what a reverb essentially is. It's just a kind of a load of reflections happening. So let's listen to this. So I'll bring the mix up so you can hear clearly. So you've got this kind of uh, like metallic reverb kind of a thing going on there. So the way that you've got these set, like the delays and stuff against each other will drastically change the way that it sounds. So if you pull, let's pull like a few of these delays way out from each other and we'll change it kind of on the fly here. So I've got a few of them set weird. I kind of just randomly set them just for the example, but Let's pull that out. You can hear as we pull the delays out further, we can get a further tail. So it's not necessarily gonna be like your bread and butter reverb that you use, but it's a cool way of having control um, over each ear, I suppose. You could just put a reverb on, you know, on a, a stereo splitter thing and change it in each ear but this will let you like phase it in one ear and then out the other ear and stuff like that it's pretty cool so that's a way of making a cool stereo reverb with the blur um, i'll just show it to you here on the vocal as well uh, generally things like this sound better on sort of more sustained material so let's uh, uh this is the vocal without and then here's it with the the blur reverb And you can hear it's kind of shifting, you know, uh, in the stereo spectrum. So that's uh, something that's kind of unique that you can do with the bar. So yeah, you can hear a kind of uh, shifting in the stereo spectrum, the, the reverb that you create with these. Um, I'll just show an example of uh, it on uh, like a synthesizer kind of a sound. So, so this is just the, the synth sound that I got programmed in. And then let's bring in this big blur chain that I've got here with loads of blurs happening. So I'll turn that on now. And then here's it with the blur. And then off. Yeah, so again, that's just the exact same thing. Again, I've just got a whole bunch of blurs stacked on top of each other with different settings that I kind of set randomly and they made a reverb sound. Uh, the final thing I want to show you is... Um, uh, the idea that you can, if you think of it as a big long uh, chain almost of feedback, um, that's not really what it is, but you can kind of think of it like that. So you've got one blur going into another blur into another blur. You can kind of affect what happens in between them. So I've got like, you know, a bunch of blurs here. And in between them, I've got other effects like pitch shifters and choruses and, um, you know, reverb 
there's actually a reverb in there. Um, just loads of stuff to change up the signal that's getting passed to the next delay. So um, before I play this though, um, this is very important to understand. This sound is extremely spooky. So please make sure that you're not home alone or anything because I don't want to be responsible for giving anyone a major spook and don't say you weren't warned. So here's the sound. It's just a snare going through. Let me show you. That's the entire, that's every track at once, which was not how they were supposed to be played. Let me solve that. So uh, here's the snare sound. So that's all that's happening there. And now let's throw through this big massive blur and multiple things in between the blur chain. So there's the vocal going through as well there afterwards. So you can hear, um, if we change sort of stuff in between different parts of these blurs, we can sort of drastically change the sound we're getting. So let's change up this resonator and let's change the pitch shifter as well. I've got a rotary on there for some reason, so I just throw that on. So yeah, spooky. Um, so that's the blur device covered. It's one of the uh, more basic ones. So there's not really a whole lot to go over with that. Um, hopefully a couple of the examples were useful to you. Uh, I tried to come up with some creative ways of using it as well. So hopefully you enjoyed those. And if you didn't, I'm really sorry. But if you did, we only need 10 more subscribers for 1,000 subscribers. So I'd really like if you'd...